Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. Now, it's been about a year since I've uh, spent any time on Orbiter and uploaded a video, but lately I have been uh, a bit interested for some reason in starting off on the moon, uh, going back to the Earth, and doing a direct re-entry so that I can land at the, at the target base. And this is a topic that I actually covered with Dimitri in the IMF uh, IMFD training videos that we did. So I've actually been re-watching uh, that portion of the IMFD training to teach myself how to do this all over again. And it's actually taken quite a bit of practice to get the uh, to get the process down. But I think I have it now. So yeah, I just wanted to record a video and go through that process. So let's just go ahead and jump right into things. Switch camera views here. So we're on the moon. We're in the XR2 Raven Star. And this particular scenario doesn't matter, but I think this is one that I, I saved after uh, recording some videos last year where I started off on Earth and went to the moon and landed at Brighton Beach. I think this save point is from that video, but it doesn't really matter uh, what particular scenario you're using. So we're going to do this with IMFD. So I'm going to just start off by bringing up IMFD and we're gonna go into the menu and the first thing that we need to do is uh, use base approach. And then we're going to reference the Earth. Then I'm going to switch pages, change my source to the moon, and switch pages again. And then I'm going to target, in this case, it's going to be Cape Canaveral. All right, so once I have that done, I'm going to set up a few variables here. I want my target altitude at Earth to be 60 kilometers, so I'm just going to type in 60K. And then my re-entry angle, I, I don't really fully remember what this variable is exactly for, but I remember we set it to 5.5. And then we have the anticipation angle. Uh, the anticipation angle is a bit easier for me to understand. Basically, let me bring up map MFD, let me reference the Earth. And let's uh, target Cape Canaveral. Can Cape Canaveral. So the each one of these boxes is, a, is a 30 degrees. And let me just zoom in on Cape Canaveral for a moment. Scrolling over here. So we have if we have a re, if we have an anticipation angle of zero, that is telling IMFD that we want to arrive at Earth and we want to arrive like straight above uh, Cape Canaveral and we don't want to do that because you know when you arrive at Earth you're traveling at 11,000 meters per second and if you arrive right above KSC you're gonna go so far past it that you know you'll never be able to land so the the anticipation angle is simply how far ahead or perhaps behind the target do you want to be and in the different videos that I went through with Dimitri, we found that around 45 degrees works pretty well. So I'm going to set that as my anticipation angle. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to give IMFD a hint, uh, a time hint. And the way we do that is just by going to hint and hit the plus button. You'll notice that nothing really changes over here, but as I continue to click plus, eventually you'll see all this update. And there it is, you can see it updated. So uh, IMFD thinks it has found a solution to get us back to the Earth according to our plan, but you'll notice that the outward velocity is 1.6, almost 1.7K. And I know from experience that the, the delta V needed to go from the moon back to the Earth is closer to 900 meters uh, per second. So I'm gonna increase the hint so that it will find a new um, uh, uh, it'll, try, it'll try to find another time where we can make this flight. And as I do that, you'll notice the OV will eventually update. And you can see there it just went down by, what was that, 600 or so. But again, that's still too high, so I'm going to keep going forward. So 974, that's much more reasonable, but we, can, we should be able to beat that. We should be able to get, yeah, uh, 900 there about. I've actually seen this even lower than that, but let me just go forward. Uh, there's a good chance it's going to increase as I go forward, but just let me check. 
yeah, so it's starting to increase. So it looks like for this particular uh, set of circumstances that we have going on at the moment, um, this outward velocity of about 901 is the best that we're going to do. All right, so that's really all we have to do for that part of IMFD at the moment. So I'm going to bring up IMFD on the other side, and I think I do have to share it. So let me go ahead and share uh, side zero with side one. So I'm gonna type in zero, hit, hit enter, and now we need the uh, surface launch program. And the, uh, the particular program that we want to connect to in surface launch is base approach. So with course program selected, I'm going to hit plus until I get over to base approach. And really all this does is it tells me what heading I need and it helps me keep track of my relative inclination as I'm getting up into orbit around the moon. And I don't know that setting this really matters, but I'll go ahead and set this anyway to let's say 30 kilometers. So I'll say that that's gonna be my target altitude um, when I get up off the moon and get into orbit. All right, so that's about it for this setup. We're ready to launch, but I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna bring up um, burn time calculator and I know that the delta velocity required to get into orbit around the moon is around 1680, but I'm going to put in 1675. And when I'm ready to do my main engine burn, I'm just going to hit the burn button. And that way, um, I don't have to remember to cancel my main engines um, when I'm getting close to orbital velocity. That way I can focus all of my attention on keeping my relative inclination down to a minimum number. But that's it. We're ready to go. So let me hit F8 here and come down just to make sure that external cooling's off. Make sure all this stuff is closed up, and it is. And we, we need the hover doors open. We probably don't need the retro doors open, but I'll leave them open. And we need the radiator, and obviously we need the landing gear down. So let's go ahead and start the APU. And I'll switch back over to these larger MFDs because I find them much easier to look at. All right, so I need to hover up off the moon, rotate clockwise I believe in this case let me think about it yeah clockwise I think is a little bit shorter so I can get around to a heading of about 76.5 degrees and then we're going to punch it and get into orbit so that's going to be the plan all right so let's hover up think for a second yep hover up wheels up and then we'll go ahead and gear raise the up. landing gear rotation start rotating around and as I'm rotating around I'm going to start lowering the hover engine because I don't want to up and lock launch myself really high up. So we're going for an initial heading of 76.5 degrees. So I'm just keeping an eye on the uh, th this heading indicator up here to let me know when I am approximately at that heading. And maybe take out a little bit more hover. Okay, so we're almost there. So let me just start killing the rotation. A little bit more. So we want 76.5, so a little bit more. About, about right there, I'd say. All right, now I'm going to uh, get rid of all the hover, turn off the level horizon, and we're going to punch the main engines. Translation. And we're going to bring in the hover doors. Now, using burn time calculator this way, again, just lets me focus m all of my attention on the uh, EIN or relative inclination. I want to make sure that that's you know as close to zero as I can get it. Let me change the projection here. And it looks like you know we got our initial heading dialed in really well. So uh, we're increasing a little bit. Let me go a little bit that way. No, that's the wrong direction. So a little bit that way. And now you can see that the oops. Let me pitch up a little bit. We don't want to go down. And if the relative inclination isn't absolutely perfect, it's okay. I can fix it when I get into orbit. But hopefully we can keep it pretty well dialed into zero. Information. APU running. Okay, and you can see the burn time calculator finished up the burn, and we are really close to being, um, you know, at a perfect orbit. All right, let me go ahead and go to the prograde position, change the HUD over to orbit, 
and we our relative inclination is off by just the tiniest little bit so once we get rotated here I'll go ahead and try to correct that okay so turn off prograde we switch over to linear translation and not sure which direction I need to go, so I'm just going to test. APU running. Go ahead and turn off the APU. Okay, there we go. We are down to 0 0.000. All right, now we need to bring up our altitude to 30 was my target. So I'm just going to burn the main engines for a moment. Watching my APA and orbit MFD. Rotation. Translation. Go ahead and go back into prograde, and we'll get the last little bit there with with translation. Okay, so we're we have our apoapsis set at our target. Turn prograde off and see if I can fix my my relative inclination. There we are. We're back down to zero. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do probably is to um, balance out our orbit or circularize our orbit. We may not need to do that depending on when the time to do the burn is in interplanetary MFD. So let me think for a moment. Okay, so now I need to bring up the Delta Velocity program. No, I need to bring up Orbit Eject. So on this side, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to Orbit Eject, change the projection. That looks a little bit better. And I'm going to connect this with the, with the base approach program. So the time to eject is 5,800 seconds. And the time to our apoapsis is 2,400 seconds. So we're going to reach apoapsis much quicker then we are going to reach the time to eject. So the next order of business is to warp time forward over to apoapsis. 5,000. That makes me nervous hearing that. But our altitude's going up, so we should be good. Time to the apoapsis is 400, 300, 200, 100. Let's go back to real time and go oh. prograde. And what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and use IMFD's orbit uh, circularization program so we'll come over here to orbital and we'll go to the circularize it's gonna be a very small burn only eight meters per second and it's going down a little bit so we'll go all the way pretty much to one second and then we'll circularize mm -hmm. so let me turn off prograde go ahead and warp time forward here and we're just getting really close now to the time to begin the burn go back to real time and auto burn And you can see that um, IMFD is taking care of our orbit circularization for us, and it's done a pretty good job of it. You know, we have a zero eccentricity, and we're really close to that target altitude that we set for ourselves. Okay, so let's go back into orbit eject, and let me bring IMFD back up on this side. Now I want to unshare this side for a moment, so I'm going to put in one, because this side's zero, this side's one, so by putting in the side that I am on, it will unshare. All right, now I'm going to go into the uh, course program and I want to go into delta velocity and change the projection. And I'm just going to copy what I have over here into the delta velocity program. So I'm going to go to the TEJ, I'm just going to click set and I'm going to set it to that number. So let's go 3385 and enter. And now we're going to set our uh, forward velocity in the delta velocity program so that it's equal to the uh, dv that we see over here. So I'm going to go next, next, next. Nope. Previous is shorter. And set. And then 859.4. So now we have a copy of the orbit eject program in, delta veloc in the delta velocity program. And that will allow us to use IMFD's really good map program so that we can have pretty good pinpoint accuracy with our uh, target base when we get back to Earth. So I'm going to go to menu on this side. Now I want to share the left side with the right side. 
So I'm going to press page and I'm going to hit enter or rather press one, then hit enter so that the left side can receive data from the right side. Then we're going to bring up the map program, change the projection. And I'm going to page over and I want to hit plan so that map uh, MFD is getting its um, it's getting its information from the delta velocity program. Now this look over here on the left side isn't the greatest, so I'm going to uh, press SOI to turn on the sphere of influence, page back over, and turn on the display so that we have our you know our display information. And I believe we need to reference the Earth on this side as well. Yes. And actually, one other thing I'm forgetting. On the left side, we also want to go into the configuration and put in our landing target. So set, and we want Cape Canaveral. OK, so back, back into the map program. I'm going to go ahead and turn off Auto Zoom. And I want to know, what I want to know at Earth is my PEA information. I don't really care about the APA. So I'm going to, I believe it is mod. Yeah, so I want to press mod in there. The, I want to not only see the PEA, APA at Earth, but I also want to see the latitude and longitude. So I think I have to hit cell here. Yeah, there we go. So now I have my PEA at Earth and I have my latitude and longitude. Now the target latitude, or rather the target longitude that I'm going to need is going to be at, uh, about 45 degrees to the west of Cape Canaveral. So I need to know the longitude of Cape Canaveral and I can get that by going into map. And I've already targeted Cape Canaveral here and you can see that Cape Canaveral is at 80.65 degrees west. So I just wanna add 45 to that number. So it's up at, this number is approximately 80. And I want, and remember I'm going west, so I wanna to add to this number, not subtract. So that my target longitude is going to be about 125 degrees west. So let me go back into interplanetary on this side. And the way that I set my, lo my longitude and my periapsis is just by playing with the variables like we uh, have done in so many past videos using IMFD transex. So just by adding in, adding or subtracting time from the eject, it's gonna have a big impact on what we see over here. And by adding in or subtracting forward velocity is also going to have a big impact on what we see over here. In all likelihood, we will also have to do a bit of plane changes adjustment and inward outward. So let's go ahead and uh, let's just start with the time. Now there is one thing I should say about the time. We're still 3,150 seconds away from the time to do the burn. That's far enough out in the future that our predictions could be a little bit off. So we just want to keep that in mind. Whatever we configure here we're going to want to reevaluate all of this when we get down to like 500 seconds away from the time to do the burn. Maybe 600 seconds, let's call it 600 seconds. That way we have 10 minutes to refine our plan. But we're coming up pretty close to 20 minutes for uh, this video and I don't want to have it, I don't want to have ind each individual section go too long. So I'll go ahead and press pause here. And when we come back, we'll pick up with this plan and we will continue on. Hope you, hope you enjoyed watching this part, and I will see you in the next video.